These days, a lot of people are using the internet on multiple devices, PCs, tablets, smartphones, hell, you can even browse the web from a smart fridge. What a wonderful world we live in. Now, with all of these devices, it's pretty handy to have browsers on them that can synchronize with one another so that you can easily log into accounts that were created across devices, or maybe you wanna use a saved credit card from your desktop for a site that you're visiting on your phone, or maybe you wanna go back to a page you bookmarked a long time ago on your desktop and then continue looking at it on your tablet. The possibilities with sync data are endless. But if you choose to use this synchronization feature, it's important to understand how it works in your browser of choice because different browsers have different sync capabilities and different methods of securing that data, which really matters if you're going to sync things like your passwords or your credit card info. So today, we're gonna to take a look at Chrome, Brave, and Firefox, probably some of the three most popular browsers and their sync features, and I'll give you my thoughts on them. So Chrome is the one that you guys are probably most familiar with. Chrome is by far the most popular browser, and part of the reason for that is it comes pre-installed on a lot of devices, plus everyone and their mother has a Google account. By the way, if you're thinking, oh, do I have a Google account? Well, if you have a Gmail, then yeah, you have a Google account. Sign into a Chrome browser with that Gmail and boom, you can start syncing your data. Now, this method of synchronization is pretty secure because ultimately it's linking to a Gmail or some kind of Google account. And that is something that most people, even non-techie types, understand is a very important account that they should not just give anyone the password to. And hell, even if they do, I'm pretty sure that two-factor authentication is a requirement on Google accounts and actually has been for some time on Google accounts whenever you sign into them from a new device. So Google kind of idiot proofs their account security to a degree. In fact, this security of Google accounts is part of the reason why you see sign in with Google on so many websites and apps instead of them preferring to do account security and account logins themselves. But while a Google account may be secure, it is not very private. Nothing made by Google is private because their whole business model revolves around collecting and monetizing your data. And there's another problem that's actually becoming a much bigger and bigger threat to pretty much anything that is connected to your Google account, and that is getting your Google account banned. Now, you may be thinking, well, how exactly would my Gmail account get banned? Or better yet, how would my account just for syncing data across my Chrome browsers get banned if you're not even using the Gmail? Well, remember, your Google account is not just your Gmail, it's also your YouTube account. Remember, YouTube is owned by Google. So if you were to get banned from YouTube for let's say using the gamer word one too many times, you could actually get your whole Google account deleted and be locked out of a lot of stuff. Something like this actually happened to Jordan Peterson a few years back. I don't know all the details of the incident offhand, but I believe it was his YouTube account that was in violation of one of Google's rules, which of course are arbitrarily enforced. There might as well be hooded people throwing chicken bones inside of Google's HQ to determine TOS violations. And his YouTube being disabled, that resulted in his Gmail being disabled as well. And that had this cascading effect of all other apps and accounts that he had connected to Gmail also being inaccessible for a few days or so that he was locked out. And in his case, people from Google initially had said that he violated the rules, like they sided with the automated message that he got, uh, but they didn't specify which rules he had broken. And most likely, the only reason that he got it back was because of his fame, like his band was getting a lot of media attention. And so, you know, they switched it around and said, oh, you actually didn't break the rules. Uh, but anyway, I rank Google Chrome's syncing the lowest, 
because while it is very secure, okay, I will give them that, I, I will admit Google accounts are a very secure thing, but I don't even see much point in securing that data if Google can just take it away from me. Next up is Brave, which despite being Chromium based, it has a completely different sync functionality to Chrome. So in Brave, we don't have any accounts for synchronization, okay? There's nothing like that. Instead, we have this thing called a sync chain. So by default, you're not using any synchronization. This is how you go and start using the sync chain. Uh, and we'll say a computer and then boom, this is how everything is secured. You get this um, seed phrase and hmm, this looks kind of familiar, kind of like a recovery phrase for a crypto wallet. So from the perspective of a brute force attack, this is uncrackable. I think it's actually a little bit higher than 256 bits of entropy when they're using 25 words here, which to try to explain how secure that is, you could have millions of parallel universes, each one with a universe-sized supercomputer whose only job is to try and crack this seed phrase, and it would still take millions of years for all of those computers to break it. Uh, however, I don't really trust most people to keep this seed phrase secure. I mean, hell, this one right here isn't secure anymore because I just showed it to all of you. Now you can put this into your Brave browser and you can look at all of my browser history and see my saved passwords and uh, street addresses and not credit cards because Brave only saves those locally. If we go to, I think it's autofill and uh, payment methods, then we try to add a credit card. Yeah, they tell you that this card is only gonna be saved to this device. And by default, there isn't really any barrier to making this seed phrase or this recovery phrase pop up. Like it tells you here uh, to treat the code like a password, but we don't see this until it's already popped up. Uh, there's no password that you have to put in to get to this, at least by default. Maybe that's something you can uh, configure deep in the Brave setting somewhere. Um, so you can imagine the social engineering opportunities with something like this. If someone was to try to run the old Microsoft support scam on a victim or any other way that someone might get you to share your screen or maybe even look over your screen in the case of shoulder surfing and then get you to go to this setting where the seed phrase pop up, pops up, uh, then they're able to get access to any sensitive data that you might be syncing or delete that data as well. Now it is worth noting that by default, Brave is only going to be syncing your bookmarks. Okay, so it's not gonna sync additional stuff unless you tap here to sync everything or you you know go through and tick on the individual stuff you wanna sync. Uh, so your bookmarks are really the only thing that's at risk with the default configuration. Now, even though a Brave account isn't being created, your encrypted data is still being synced with Brave servers. I think the only plain text data that Brave gets about you though with your sync habits is things like the names of the devices that you're syncing. Uh, but let's say that you don't even want Brave to have this information on you. It is possible to self-host your own Brave sync server. Uh, so the software for that is written in Go and this can be deployed to a Docker container. But there is a downside to this, which is every time you start the Brave browser, you're gonna have to pass in this sync URL argument uh, via command line arguments or something like that. Like you're pretty much gonna have to create your own custom shell script for launching Brave with that argument on each individual platform. Cause of course it's gonna be different on Linux, Windows and Mac OS. Uh, and yeah, it looks like this is still an issue that's been open for a while that, uh, you know, Brave just hasn't changed yet. So it's a little bit of a hack to self-host stuff and then get that browser to work with the self-hosted syncing, um, you know, on your end, on each of your devices, but it is possible to do it. So I think that Brave's sync is definitely more private than Chrome's is, especially if you self-host the sync server. It's not as featureful though, because again, you're not going to be able to sync credit cards. 
Okay, that stuff just stays locally on the devices. And it might actually be less secure doing this sync function uh, because like I explained, somebody might get tricked into showing an attacker this seed phrase. Obviously, if you're an OG crypto chad, then you're gonna know better than this, but there's a lot of normies that are using Brave that probably don't know better. Now, let's look at how Firefox does synchronization. It's actually a lot more similar to Chrome's because we use an account for uh, the security instead of a seed like we do in Brave. But if you watched Sir Sudo's self-hosted Firefox sync video, then you know that the sync server can be self-hosted, but also the Firefox account server can be self-hosted. So keep that in mind whenever you say or you hear someone say, oh, I don't wanna give Mozilla my email for browser sync. You don't actually have to do that if you self-host. You don't have to give them any of your data at all. You don't have to create an account uh, technically with them. You're basically creating an account for your own server. Uh, and then of course, for the synchronization, you can run that self-hosted as well. And you should definitely check out Sir Sudo's video to learn how to do that uh, self-hosted Firefox sync. And he's got a lot of other great self-hosted videos on his channel, which is really the next step in learning online privacy and digital freedom because you've got to self-host your own stuff whenever you can and start using software if you aren't already that's going to be able to interface with your self-hosted infrastructure. Plus, you learn a lot when you self-host your own things. This is the kind of stuff where if you're looking for a job, especially a job in IT, setting up your own self-hosted stuff and hell, add it to your resume, that could get your foot in the door. Now, for account security with uh, syncing in Firefox, of course, it's email and password by default, uh, but Mozilla does allow you to add an authenticator app for two-factor authentication, which is what I recommend doing because I can't stress enough how important securing a sync account is. And this particular app isn't listed as a supported one, but Aegis, or however you pronounce it, A-E-G-I-S, that does work with Firefox Sync, which is a really nice GPL authenticator app available on F-Droid. Oh, and Firefox Sync also does support uh, syncing credit cards. Um, in fact, I think I actually have one uh, synced in here, if I can remember. Uh, where to see it. Um, well, I mean, you can see here for the options uh, to sync it. I had a test credit card in here I was gonna show you, but you'll just have to take my word for it. So yeah, it syncs the credit cards, which is something that the Brave browser doesn't do. Uh, I believe that Firefox's sync is pretty much on par with Brave, so or on par with Chrome's rather. So all the same things uh, that are gonna be in there, you're able to see in here as well. And yeah, you can see all the different devices that I've had synced with this. You can sync as many as you want. So overall, I rank Firefox Sync the highest. By default, it might be a little bit less secure than Chrome because they don't force two-factor on you like Google does, but you can add an authenticator two-factor if you want it, and that's what I recommend you do. And of course, self-hosting. Self-hosting the sync server and self-hosting the account server gives you ultimate privacy with Firefox. So I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Like and share this video to hack the algorithm. And again, go check out Sir Sudo's channel. He's making awesome self-hosted content. He's doing a podcast called Freedom of Technology. His channel's a real gem. Make sure you bookmark it and sync that with your self-hosted Firefox sync server.